Well, this is Joe McGee. Welcome to our podcast. Make sure that you subscribe and please share the podcast with your friends. That is the number one way you can help us reach people with God's love and healing. We love you guys. Hope you enjoy the podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday Wisdom with Joe McGee. We're taking time and going through some key words in the Bible. You know, the Bible's got a lot to say about everything. You know, remember when I was teaching uh, uh, my class at high school 10 years, I had a special class just for seniors and uh, um, called a biblical worldview, you know, how the world looks from the Bible's standpoint, which is very different the way the world looks at it. So uh, we would pick out words, and uh, and so we're kind of going through that here today. So the first one we're going to cover today, we're covering the word diligent, diligent. It means uh, get it done. <laughs> you know, just get it done. So look, look, look a few scriptures right here. Uh, Proverbs chapter 10 and verse four, Proverbs 10 and verse four. Now, most of the scriptures I'm reading from are coming from the new living translation uh, and several others are coming from the new King James translation. So if you're wondering where I'm getting it, it's either the new living translation or the new King James. So Proverbs 10, four on the word diligent says this, he becomes poor that deals with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent is made rich. The hand of the diligent is made rich. What does that mean? Well, you don't work, you don't eat, my daddy used to say, son. You don't work, you don't eat. Got to work to eat. So the hand of the diligent is made rich. Got to get after something. Then Proverbs 12, 24. Proverbs 12, 24. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the sloth or the lazy shall be under labor. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule. The hand of the diligent is made rich. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule. That's a good list to get on. I'm telling you, it's just a good way to start things out. Then Proverbs 13, verse 4. Proverbs 13, verse 4. says, the soul of the slugger desires and has nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. The soul of the diligent shall be made fat. So the hand of the diligent is made rich. Um. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule. The soul of the diligent shall be made fat. There's nothing bad about being a hard worker. Uh, Jesus said a lot lot about laziness, about work. Uh, Work's a four-letter word, but it's not a cuss word. You don't work, you don't eat. So it's good to have some good labor. I like this, Proverbs 21, verse 5. Proverbs 21, verse 5. The thoughts of the diligent think only on plenteousness. But everyone that is hasty only to want. So I'm going to kind of read this in the difference. It's the thoughts of the dil- diligent tend only to plenty. The thoughts of the diligent. What are you thinking about? More? <laughs> Every day you get up. What about, well, I want more today than I had yesterday. I want to do more today than I did yesterday. I want to think more today than I thought yesterday. We're trying to move forward, not go backwards. We're going from faith to faith, glory to glory. And so it's sort of an attitude you can develop. Hopefully you develop it as a child. You know, the whole idea about having Christian parents, they teach you what the word of God says. And uh, I remember when my kids were much younger. I'd give them a three by five card every week. And I would have just one verse on that three by five card, one verse, you know, like the, the Proverbs 10, four, uh, the hand of the diligent is made rich. I said, you know, lazy people, you're going to sit next to me in class. You're going to be on the ball field with them. You're going to be on the on the basketball court with them. Some people just won't put in the effort, and they're probably not going to make the team. They're probably not going to get to, get to play much because everybody's looking for somebody that will produce. You know, you're looking for production. <clears throat> uh, you, know, and, uh, you know, Jesus, the parable of the talents, and he comes back, you know, uh, talking about the guy that got in charge of five things, one guy in charge of uh or uh, two things, one guy in charge of one thing. So they were given that responsibility according to their ability to handle it. So a farmer's going to leave, big ranch has got a big ranch. He leaves. Okay, I'm going to put five sections of my ranch. You're in charge of five sections of my ranch because you proved you can handle five sections. Next guy, you proved you can handle two. You can handle five, but you can't handle two, so I'm going to put you in charge of two sections of my ranch. And then the third guy said, well, you you not proved much to me, but I'm going to put you in charge of one section. So the guy takes a long journey. He comes back, comes back to the guy with the five. What did you do with my five sections of land? He said, well, Lord, I worked them hard. We fertilized and we did good stuff and said that we made so much money 
I know I did not have your permission. We made so much money off those five sections of land. I went up and bought you five more producing sections of land. You're now the proud owner of five, ten, ten producing sections of land. And the Bible says Jesus is telling the story. Jesus said, the man said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you rule over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Then he comes down to the guy with two. He said, well, what would you do with my two sections of land? And said, Master, I said, uh, uh, I worked hard. We, we irrigated really good. Man, we got good water on those crops. They produced so much that I made so much money off those two sections of land. I know I didn't have your permission, but I went out and bought you two more producing sections of land. You're now the proud owner of four producing sections of land. Jesus is telling the story. He says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful of a few things. I'll make you rid of many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Then he comes down to the guy with the one. What you do with my one section of land? The guy starts to cry. Well, Lord, I know you're a hard man. You reap where you don't sow. You gather where you don't straw. Uh, and, and I was afraid, and I wouldn't hit your stuff in the dirt. He said, well, go get my stuff. So the guy didn't do a thing with it. He just buried it and got it dirty. So he brought it back, handed it back to him, basically in, in a dirty fashion. And the master said, take from him that has one and give it to him that has ten. And he said, you lazy and slothful servant. If you knew that I reap where I don't sow and gather where I don't straw, you should at least have cashed in that land, put the money in the bank, so at least I could have drawn some interest on it. But I didn't get nothing for you being in charge of it. And so he said, give it to the guy that has 10. And to him that has shall more be given. To him that hath not even that which he has should be taken away. So diligent is a great thing to teach yourself, teach your kids, your teenagers, it's good. Work is a four letter word, but it's not a cuss word. Work is a good, it's a good thing. I like this scripture, Proverbs twenty two twenty nine. See a man diligent in his business. He shall stand before Kings. He shall not stand for mediocre men. Go to what? Stand before Kings. Proverbs twenty four sixteen. A just man may trip seven times, but each time he will rise again. But one calamity is enough to lay the wicked low. So time to get diligent. Whatever you do today, put your mind to it. Put your effort behind it. Some days go better than others, but you, the sun comes up every morning. And you get to start all over again. So let's stay diligent and let's make God happy. Amen. God bless, guys. Thanks for listening. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God could do in your life. It's got a great future for you and your family. And we're here to help you get there. Please make sure you visit Joe McGee Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. There you find all of our Friday funny videos and other encouraging resources for you and your family. While you're at it, be sure to visit JoeMcGee.com. We have all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.